my temper and preserve me from all manner of evil. I'll show you a shortcut. I'll carry a bag, miss. Let me walk behind you, miss, just till we reach cover. Spread the skirts out, miss. supposed to be running. We're getting his weight down. Getting his weight down? He's skin and bone already. Come up. He's got to ride a good one. Who are you, may I ask? Esther Waters. Oh, the new kitchen maid. Esther. I like that. I'll take your bundle. Hmm. Feels like books. I'm William. William Latch. I suppose the rest of your stuff's down at Shoreham. Here. Footman. But I'm doing groom just to oblige the gaffer. Who's the gaffer? Well, Squire Barfield. Of course, Mum said against it, but she wants me to be a shopkeeper. 
But I want to be with a horse. It's the only way to get the real information. Don't you agree? That's him. The grey in front. That's Silverbraid. They look very thin for carriage horses. Carriage horses? <laughs> Right round the estate? Yes. See old hatchet face up there? That's Mr. Randall. He's the butler. He's been here since you can't remember. They say he's got thousands sorted away somewhere. Got off tips he got from the gaffer. Now do you see what I'm after? No, I don't. You've never seen a racehorse before? No. Do they belong here? Oh, Squire Barfield's one of the best known trainers in Sussex. Haven't you ever heard of Woodview Racing Stables? Is there betting in that? <laughs> what are they staring at me for? <laughs> Don't be silly, it's not you, it's the horses. <clears throat> mm, come on, she'll be after me for keeping. Here she is. Esther. Why are you so late? Six people to deny me without a kitchen maid. There's no blame on Esther if the train was late. I suppose you kept her. You could have a lasting brag and boast and sit in your cab with any girl that takes your eye. Esther, indeed. Esther, indeed. Well, I declare. I suppose I've got to call you Miss Tucker. And Margaret, she's to be Miss Gale, eh? <laughs> and you'll just call me Grover, if you please. I don't suppose even your mum was there to use your front name. <laughs> I won't be into supper. I'm going down to Shoreham. Get my uniform. I'll pick up your trunk at the station, Esther. Don't stand there. Stir yourself. Start on those vegetables. If you'll excuse me, ma'am. My working things aren't here yet. Huh? What you've got on won't come to my charm, by the looks of it. <laughs> Whoa there. Where are you going to? I'll not stay here to be insulted. You've got a terrible temper, my girl. Don't you, my girl, me. Let me by, I'm going. There's no train till the morning. Well, I'll walk then. Oh, come up, Esther. It's not you, Mum's mad at, it's me. Your mother? Yes. All that talk about the uniform that did it. I told you how it was. Here, slip this on and cool off. She's not a bad sort, as soon as you know her. Clattering up the doorway. Yeah, Mr. Randall. How did the trial go, Mr. Randall? Silver brace next stand up, all right, Mr. Randall? Was he timed over the mile, Mr. Randall? What does the gaffer think now? Was he pleased, do you think? A curse, that's what it is, all this chatter. What business have a lot of females to do with horses? I'll thank you all to keep outside my pantry. Not me, Mr. Randall. Oh. oh. Oh, you've come to your senses, have you? I want the potatoes to start with. And we'll have the spring cabbage. And I want warm plates for nine for the dining room. Quite a simple dinner, only six courses. Then there's twelve to lay for in the servants' hall. moment Jonquil heard the turning of the key in the ancient rusty lock, she knew she was the victim of a fiendishly contrived plan. As the Count slowly advanced towards her, she noticed that his smile, which had appeared so frank and reassuring in the bluebell wood, now positively distorted his pale and handsome features. Suddenly the Count's arms were about her, and she felt his breath come hot upon her cheek. Jonquil, he whispered, Fate has intended you for me, and me for you. And at that moment, she swooned into his arms. Go on. That's all for this month. Oh, what a shame. I do think it's such a lovely story. Don't you, Esther? We think such tales are sinful rubbish. Oh? Who's we? Chapel folk. And our chapel folk let read at all. Esther's bought lots of books with her. Sinful books. Good books. They were my father's. And what are they about? 
Well, what are they about? Read the first five lines of that. I won't. It's evil. Can you? What is it, Esther? Can't you read? No, indeed she can't, the ignorant baggage. All she can do is preach. Godless, you're godless. Look at her setting herself up in judgment. Godless, godless. Stop that shouting. And where's my cup of tea? Get your own tea. <laughs> Piece of trouble you've caused, I must say. Follow me. Never. Never don't you pass through this door without your properly accompanied. Come on. Madam, we'll see you now. I'm here, Warden. Pretty, aren't they? Yes, ma'am. Now, Waters. I understand you're not very happy here. No, ma'am. I wonder why. I meant to keep my wicked temper, ma'am. Really, I did. But I started off wrong and it got worse no matter what I did. Anyhow, I think you're meant to send me away. <laughs> my dear child, what do you mean by meant? But I don't think I should stay here. I was brought up to think that racing and gambling and such things are wicked. We're chapel folk. So am I. You, ma'am? Why not? In this house. What is your name? Esther. Well, Esther, when we begin to get on in life, some of the rough edges are worn away, like pebbles in a brook. And so, without weakening in our own beliefs, we're not so anxious to change everybody. We leave that to someone else. But isn't that like forgetting your religion? No. It's just one way of forgetting oneself. Now, Esther, you mustn't think because everyone here hasn't our faith, that they're all bad. Try to recognize and bring out the good in people. Our Lord did, you know. Yes, ma'am. There. Now come with me. I thought with a little alteration, this might suit you. Oh. Like it? Oh, thank you, ma'am. Now off you go and try to make friends with the others. Yes, ma'am. Anyway, but the going's like iron. Yes, sir. Demon, you've got to get that weight down. Try as I will, I can't seem to get them last ounces off, sir. Ounces? Pounds, you mean? What we get off him on the road, he puts on again in the grub room. No, I never. Ah, I thought so. Someone watching. William? Yes, sir? Just sneak up that hill round the bushes and warn off that tout. Right, sir. Well, I was watching. Was it wrong? Watching our carriage horses. 
Mrs. Latch gave me the afternoon off. Did she? I thought you two had worked together in Arnis. You're steady, she says. You shouldn't laugh at your mother. <laughs> Poor old mum. Yeah, come and have a look. See that? The Latch Estates. You know, once upon a time, the Latches owned the lot. Barfields was nothing then. Latches up, Barfields down. But now... How did it happen, William? Well, my granddad was a bit of a masher. When he left, my father larked with racing and drinking and... You know. And your mother? Was she always... In service? No. No, her old man was a yeoman farmer, his own boss. She was a steady girl. She hoped my dad would retrieve the family fortunes, but he liked his bit on the horses. Only he chose the wrong ones. Poor William. Don't you believe it. Do you know what? I'm going to put the latches back where they belong. And you know why? Because I'm lucky. If only it isn't another dry storm. We'd best find some cover. Latch Manor. Make yourself home. Uh, take a seat. Listen. It is. Rain. Buckets of it for Barfield and old Goodwood. Listen. If they're going soft at Goodwood, Silver Braid will walk it. The money's stacked on him now at 33s. Woodview money, of course. Nobody else knows anything about the horse. William, have you bet much? More than I can afford to lose. But I don't think I shall. And that's only the start, see? Then if I bet careful for a couple of years, get a bit of capital, you... You know what? What? I shall buy a pub. A nice little pub on the south coast. Uh, drink? <laughs> Not just that. But when you've got a pub, you can build up a business bookmaking. But, William, what good will that do you? Esther, don't you understand? Betting's a mugs game unless you lay the odds yourself. In five years, I could lay by a nice little fortune making a book. Then can't you see it? Right across the pages of the Pinkin. Lucky Latch gets back his estate. Oh, William, I hope Silver Braid wins. <laughs> oh, Esther. What's the matter with you? I thought she was against racing there. I don't know. I've heard so much since I've been here. Maybe I've changed. Well, this is said, all right. We'd better run for it. Come on, take my coat. There you are. All right, down. Come on, run for it. <laughs> Now, look here, Demon. Everything else is right, and we're going to get your weight right. Back for her mind on business! Give you a nice piece of real meat if you're a good boy. That's right. Have you got anything on Silver Braid, William? Just a little something, miss.
tell you what he had on today? No. No, they never do. Oh, but he's bound to win. Yes. His father was a lucky latch before him. You're fond of that fool boy of mine, Esther? He was kind to me when nobody else was. I know. But that's all past now, Esther. The lad needs a woman to keep him straight. A strong-minded one. Were you? Did you hear? I was lucky, didn't I? You are. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, wait a minute. That's the shilling I borrowed from you on Monday. But it's 30 shillings, William. Yes, I know. I put it on silver braid. I've told you I was lucky, Match. That's the first turn of the cards. One moment, please. In honor of silver braid, the master is holding a certain ball in the Swiss gardens at Shoreham. Guess who you're going with? Oh, Sarah, look, you don't think it's too... too... Oh, it's silly. Hmm. Oh, Esther. Where'd you get that? It was the shilling William put on silver braid for Isn't me. Isn't well. lucky? Partners for the Grand Waltz. Isn't it like, like you? you?
Margaret. Poor William. How long will the lady keep that up? As long as poor William does that. Esther, please. People are saying things. Left them if what you said was true. Well, of course it was true. How can we get married on nothing? I don't want my wife to be in service all her life. I want her to have a home of her own. A home? On a groom's wages? I don't expect a home or to go out of service. All I want is a man who does what he says. Esther. I've only got three pounds. But I've got a dead set for the ledger. And if it comes off and it looks like a set, it'll be all right. So that's it. If I'm to be true woman or not, the horses are to say. Well, how else am I to get the money then? You won't need any money now. I wouldn't marry a man who'd take my love and risk it on a horse race. No more than I'd take a wife and I'd try to make fair and decent turns everything I say into dirt. Sarah was right. You'd make any man's life a misery. Coming, miss. You're late. I told you to have the horses ready at quarter past ten. They were ready. And waiting. Don't be impudent. Take your hats. William? Yes, miss? Are you coming? Yes, miss. Oh, 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 boys. Oh. Got the ledger winner down at Shoreham. Your horse was placed. The place was sent them to me. It was only for a place, it was only for a win. Did he win? No. He didn't. Well, that's the last bob of mine, unlucky latches, certainty. You said he couldn't go wrong. Well, he was placed, wasn't he? I wish you'd keep your advantages to yourself. Oh, come up, how much did you lose? I should have. We can't all bet in quid. speak to you. No one's stopping you? Not here. It's not about the race. I'm sorry for that. I bet you are. Well, I suppose I'd better go and answer that. I'll, I'll see you later. All right, Mr. Randall, I'll answer that. My legs are younger than yours. Stay-at-home oh, Miss Peggy's becoming. Mr. Williams developed a proper sharp ear for the bells, too. Well, I don't think much of ladies that run after their servants, if you ask me. Get where you belong. Have a nice afternoon. 
afternoon, dear. Very nice. Leopold told the gaffer he was that wild, he told him to pay William off and he was to leave that instant. Serve him right. Esther, you're to stay in bed. Mrs. Latch says so. I've got to see somebody. Well, I'll go for you. Who is he? I can't. It's Miss Peggy. Something she must know. But Esther... Oh, I'll have to tell you. When William went, they found she'd gone too. Together? What did you want to tell her, Esther? Said something about me. And about William too. I never told him. Oh, Esther. <laughs> oh, you poor, poor lamb. We'll all look after you, really, we will. your work, Esther. The boy's out on an errand. Anyhow, you shouldn't be doing it, should you? Why haven't you told me, Esther? But I'm never child now. I've been waiting. Come here, Esther. Sit down. I hated this evening, you ma'am. But you might have sent me away, and I had to have the wages. I have another to think for now. I've done my work. It's not that. I might have been able to help you. Do you wish to go on staying here? No, ma'am, thank you. I've eight pounds saved now. I can go home if I pay my stepfather my keep. Yes, I can go home. Thank heaven you have a home to go to, my poor child. You've heard nothing of William? No, ma'am. My baby's what matters now. I'd like you to take this, Esther. Yes, for your child. You've been more than kind, ma'am. May I ask one thing more? Would you pray for me? Tell me, Esther. Have you truly repented? I loved him, ma'am. But what I did was wrong. I'm sorry. Shall I read something to you? Perhaps some of the most beautiful words in the world. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear. What do you want? His mother out. Who? My mother. Oh, her that was here before. Gone. Hey, what are you getting at? She passed away, didn't she? Passed away? You said it was your mother, didn't you?
Name? Waters. E. Waters? Yes. so well because we want your bed. What are your plans now? I haven't made any yet. Well, you've got to get back to service. You know you mustn't waste no more time. But what about Jackie? Jackie. Oh, you girls should think of that before you have your Jackies. Now, look, you'll just have to board him out. Now, there's a bit of luck for you, Waters. Mrs. Rivers wants a new between maid. Mrs. Rivers? Her husband's on the board of guardians. You're very charitable people, they are. Fourteen pounds a year they're paying. Well, that's quite enough for a girl in your position. Suit you? Good. Well, I'll tell you, you'll be there Friday. But what about the baby? Oh, you'll soon get a woman to take him four and six a week. Ask one of the girls here. Now, up you get and practice your leggy pegs. Yes, Maitre. Out you go tomorrow. Well, the water sorted out. Thank you, Waters. That will do. Miss? Miss, Mrs. Spies said to tell you your baby needs the doctor. And can she have five shillings? Jackie, what's wrong with him? Send that child away. Go away, little girl. Tell Mrs. Spires I'll come as soon as I can. Waters, come here at once. How dare you talk to some children on my doorstep? She came to say my baby's ill. Please, ma'am, I must go at once. Baby's ill? You must finish your work first, and then we'll see. But they've had to send for the doctor, ma'am. In that case, there's nothing more for you to do. But I'm worried, ma'am, it may be serious. Serious? Then do you realize you may bear some dreadful affection back to my child? On second thoughts, you'd best not go at all. What if it was your child? What if you were in my place? We needn't consider impossibilities, Waters. You seem to forget why I took you here and in what circumstances. I shall ask Mr. Rivers if I should keep you on. In the meantime, continue your work. I must go and see Jackie now. You won't return if you do. Very good, ma'am. I won't return. You'll forfeit your wages. And I'll have your box thrown into the street. I dare say you'd do that, too, if you weren't afraid of the law. Insolence. Is he any better, Mrs. Spires? Frightening me like that. Coming into other people's houses without so much as a buy a leaf. Oh, I'm sorry, I was that worried about Jackie. Did you get the doctor? Without you sending the money. Haven't I all these others to see to? He's thinner than when I left. You don't expect a child to do quite so well without its mother. 
That's cold. That'll upset him. Well, I'm going to warm it by the fire, ain't I? And it ain't for yours. It's for the other one. Poor little Mike. It ain't long for this world. I wouldn't be took aback if it went before the morning. You can't help feeling sorry for the little angels. And them not even baptized. But I often think it's meant. For what have they got to look forward to? And I often say to myself, I'm their best friend. To let them go off. You've got the money for the doctor, then? I haven't got my first month's wages yet. I know. Beginning to feel the drag. What do you mean? You think of nothing but the babies at first. Then you wishes they'd never been born. Or died before they knew what it was to live like. Listen to me, and I'll be your friend. I'll do for you what I've done for others. Five pounds is all I ask. Five pounds? I haven't got five shillings. What for? You tell your mistress you're going to have the child adopted. She'll stump it up out of your wages to get it out of your mind once and for all. It's in her interest, don't you see? And it's kindest in the end. What's on your mind? I only offered to have it adopted for five pounds. Murder. So that's it. What's that? Mind what you're saying. I don't want no arguments. Just pay what you owe and take yourself off before I change my mind. Hey, no you don't. What's going on? She's making horrid accusations and leave it without pain. Take the nipples out of here without their pays. If you think you can come here and insult my wife. I know what you're doing here, getting rid of them for money. You take that back. Let her go. We don't want the police. We'll hand her over. We'll teach her to thief. Never mind, Tom. It's only two days' money. Best be rid of her. I'll take your hook. And if you open your mouth. And the baby. You shouldn't have him out this time of night. She wanted five pounds to kill him. What's that? <laughs> Who did? That's how she lives. Doing away with people's babies they don't want. Come along, young woman. This is 1875. Those things don't happen now. <laughs> uh, seems to me you want looking after. Haven't you got a home? No. And nowhere to go. I think I'd better send you along to my sister, Florrie. Laurie fixed you up, then? I just looked in to see what's what. Thanks, Laurie. This kept me an hour over my duty, this has. Kid don't look none the worse. It's all been arranged, Jim. Jackie's staying here with his auntie, Florrie, while little Mummy finds lots of nice work to do. 
the gentlewoman who aspires to an orderly run establishment would be well advised to keep a firm hand on the reins. Impress upon every member of the domestic staff the necessity of early rising. Let's get up. Make her wear gloves to sweep, clean grates, etc., that her hands may be fit to serve at table. Insist on housemaid's work being done in the morning and her dress changed before lunch. Thrift should be encouraged. Press your servants to lay by at least half their wages in the savings bank. I kept a shilling back for breakages. Thank you, ma'am. Allow no perquisites, but let your servants have the benefit of your cast-off clothes. Above all, Satisfy yourself as to the moral deportment of your maid, in the interests of both parties. Esther! Taking advantage of my poor boy's innocence? Pack your box and go! Those households are best conducted where the mistress never converses with her servants, never speaks but to gently give an order, ask a question, or say good morning and evening to her maid. Still doing the steps. You told me to do them again, ma'am. But there is this consolation for us. He took the hard way, too. And he began life as a simple craftsman, just like any one of us. Fellow work, you might say. And right from that humble start, he's shown us it doesn't so much matter what we're at. I mean, what sort of a job we've got, even what we get out of it. It's what we put into it. That's the thing that counts for us. It's a point of view, isn't it? It's the point of view that turns all our work into an offering, a prayer. And if we can do this, we can consider ourselves blessed. Why? Because we're free men and free women. As St. Paul says, if any man among you seemeth wise in this world, worldly wise that is, let him become a fool. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. So I was just wondering, do you think we ought to uh, stop the midweek service? Oh, no, Fred. I don't catch on very much. I don't know, perhaps it's me. After all, I'm not a... I mean, I'm a shop assistant. I'm not a proper preacher. I don't set up to be. I think you speak very well. It's just that I have to say what I feel sometimes. I can't help myself. Then you must go on with it. Yes, I want to. Well, I've, I've got to you see as to... I want to help if I can. You've helped me. But you really mean that? Oh, yes. Besides, I learn things from you I never would otherwise. Because, mm -hmm. well, I can't read. Well, that's nothing. Lots of people can't read, and I'm the worst for it. Oh, no, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Not for you, Esther. You don't have to go to books. Not your sort. What sort do you think I am? Sort, I think you are. Pure of heart. That's why, just a minute. Please, Esther, don't go in yet. That's why I want to ask if you'll... Will you marry me? Suppose I were to tell you that I have a child. What would you say then? So you see... I'm not the good woman you think I am. That's not true, is it? Yes, it's true. I have a child. He's six years old now. I don't know. So there's your answer. It was kind of you to ask me. Esther. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, Esther. You see, I... I didn't understand. Not at first, I didn't. I was only thinking of... 
I didn't think what you must have suffered. But you mustn't go on hurting yourself. That's what you are doing, isn't it? And Esther, if it means anything to you, I still want you. But you don't want the child. Is that it? I want you both. Will you say that again? Both, Esther. I don't know what to say. Except you're, you're a truly good man. answer now, Fred. When? You think? Tomorrow's my day for seeing Jackie. When I know. Can I tell you then? Results. He rides the winners. I'm talking from our side. You wait to see what he does on Tilly and Fancy next week. I'm not keen on Archer. Will you give me a price about that? All right, I'll give you five to one. I'll have a bet with you. Fine, that's it. Esther! Esther! This is wonderful. Where? I've been looking for you everywhere. You're not getting out, Esther. Please, please. I've got to talk to you. I've got to see you. Where have you been all these years? What have you been doing? Bringing up your child. That's what. Esther! I swear I knew nothing about the child until I came back from abroad, honest. Now that I've found you again... Take a good look and go back where you came from. Listen, Esther, I want to help. Try and get you out of this. I've got a bit of money now. I don't want any of your wife's money. Thank you. It's not hers. I made it myself. I finished with Peggy years ago. It was all a mistake, that. I, I only gave in to her after we quarreled. Esther, I swear I knew nothing about the child until I came back. Until... when Mum died. I'm sorry about your mother. was much good to her, I'm afraid. Esther, tell us about the child. What do you want to know? Is it a boy? Yes, and a fine one. What do you call him? Jackie. Where is he? No matter to you where he is. He's not here anyway. He thinks his father's dead. Now, will you please go? Esther, be reasonable. Listen to me just for a minute. Things is different with me now. I could give you a home and comfort and why a father. Easy, isn't it? You haven't changed, William. You don't even know I'm not married. I? It's none of your business. Now will you please go away and leave me alone?
Esther, I know I deserve this. I'm not asking you to think of me, I'm asking you to think of the boy. I've done you both a great wrong and I want to repay it. That's all. Esther, next time you go and see Jackie, take me with you, please. After all, I am his father. David, you can come. But I don't want him to know who you are. Anything you say, Esther. Esther, will you bring up my hot milk? Come in, ma'am. Come on, take up a hot milk. And put in a dash of arsenic. Oh, there's your ship. I'd rather have one with sails, like the big one in the toy shop in the high street. What's it like? It's cut a rig, and it's got three sails. It's much bigger than any of the ones the boys sail on the common. <laughs> What's it cost? Ever so much. Look here. There's a golden sovereign. Give it to your mother and tell her to buy it for you. Go on. William! Jackie, give me that. I might have known. Hello, Jackie. I've got some nice cakes for his tea. Mrs. Lewis, will you give him his tea in the kitchen? Oh, Mum. Come on, Come Jackie. On. So you think you can buy him back, do you? How dare you try such a trick on him? Esther, I never thought, honest. It came as natural as breathing. You never thought. Where have I been all these years? Well, I'll tell you where I've been. The first place I was in was the workhouse infirmary. That's where I had Jackie, in the workhouse. Esther. Then I went back into service for 16 pounds a year. Sometimes I couldn't even get that. And why couldn't I get it? Because I was a wicked woman on account of having your child. And where were you all those years? Traveling abroad on Peggy's money. Now that you've finished with her, you think you can buy Jackie's love from me? You'd better go now, William. Please try and see neither of us again. Esther. open. What's the matter, Esther? He's come back. What do you mean, who's come back? William, Jackie's father. Jackie's father? Well, where'd you see him? You didn't speak to him, did you? I didn't want to, Fred. I tried to get rid of him. So you did speak to him? What did he say? What's he want? He asked about the child. Said he wanted to help. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of money now. Money? What's his money got to do with it? I... I had this letter. Is that from him? I think so. Would you read it for me? You don't have to read it, Esther. Why don't you send it back to him? Please. Written from the King's Head, Dean Street. Do you keep the public house, does he? Yes. Dear Esther, you made it clear to me that you don't want me back spoiling your life. So I'm writing. I've got a lawyer to do this out clear, so it's all legal. You get 200 now for the boy, and then some each year. Cross out the bit that says, I'm to see Jackie, if you want to. I would like it, of course. He's a fine lad. What he owes to his mother. 
Forgive me, Esther, with all my love, William Latch. This is just the lawyer's document. Fred, what am I to do? I think you know. But I want to do what's fair for Jackie. Well, that's just it. Miss Plenty, where do you think it comes from? You can see how it gets it. Do you think it would be fair to the boy to touch it, that sort of money? You can't, Esther. Because it couldn't do any good to Jackie or anybody else. But he's the boy's father, Fred. And do you think he's fit to be? Oh, he's just one of the ordinary sort. No better or worse. It's only you should think that. Esther. Do you want to go back to him, do you? What makes you say that, Fred? Well, that's what it sounds like. I just want to do what's right. You can't turn back into rights, you know. Come on, let's go to service. No, I, I won't go tonight. I must think what to do. I just want to say this much. I can't give you money, if that's what you want. But I can give you life if you believe in. Not an easy life, perhaps, but it's an honest one. I, I don't want you just to give this up to somebody, to Latch or even to me. I want you to be happy. And I know that you can't be happy without God. Oh, Fred, I'm not just another soul to save. I'm a woman, too. That's why you've got to look out for omens. What about the time Britt runs second to Shoemaker? Is there any omens in a busted bootlace, Ketley? Might be. The os was pulled that time. <laughs> Looking for somebody, miss? Is Mr. Latch in? He's not back from the cross, miss. He's been at her spot. He won't be long, miss. Your friend of his, miss? Yes. Could I wait? Certainly. You take a little something. No, thank you. John's back. He'll look after you. If John won't it. Uh, John. Mr. Randy. Esther, this is a treat. Will told me he'd met you. Lucky day for him, eh? You come through to the parlor. He won't be long. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Miss. <laughs> Sit you down, Esther. Why, it's like old Woodview days. Yes. Did you get any news of Mrs. Barfield? Oh, well, you never heard what happened then? No. That's a sad story. Gaffer got killed hunting. When the will was read, there wasn't much in it, but a lot of indifferent bloodstock. Mrs. Barfield wouldn't sell out. Lives all alone in part of the house. Poor Mrs. Barfield. I had to go, of course. If it wasn't for William, I'd be in the workhouse. Keeps me on the run, though. Part book is clerk and part in the bar. You'll excuse me.
take this money. I can't. This is yours, Mrs. Letch. Is this the programme? Programme? Yes, just never been to a race meeting before. Never been to a race meeting? Oh, you are going to enjoy yourself, Mrs. Letch. Windmill, Governor. Windmill. Go away. Windmill. Go away. The Governor, don't hurry up changing. We shall lose our place on the hill. Come on, give us the starters. Culloden. Cumberland. Townmore. That's Lord Ramsbury. Mr. Norman is pretty dry. Webber. That's the horse. That's the horse. Not for your life, it isn't. Why, don't the omens give it? The Governor fancies Illicor. What, the Yankee? The Yankee. Fred Archer, right? That don't make him a winner, do it? That man's a god to will that. Who ever heard of a Yankee winning the derby? Here's the governor. Well, Mrs. Latch, what do you think of the uniform, eh? Governor, we'll never get our pitch. Come up, John, you don't get married every day, you know. Come on, Tom, up to get... Stuck here all day. Aye, take that old hearse out of the way, can't you? Well, it's your fish, can't race you up the hill for a guinea. I bet you father you don't. All right, get your money ready. Goodbye. I want your hats. Come on, me beauty. Started, then we'll have a bite to eat, eh? So you two came together after all? Yes. We were married this morning. This morning? <laughs> Old Esther of all people getting tied up on Derby Day. <laughs> it was William's fancy. You know about him and his luck. So Will's a bookie, eh? Come and meet my friend, Mr. Edwards. You listen to people who knows nothing about horses, never did and never will. You follow your fancy. You let the old woman pick out one because she likes the colour of the jockey's shirt. All right. You want to throw your money away? Don't come to me. Just shove your hand in your pocket, take out what you got and fling it away. But if you want to make some cash, if you want to make your racing pay, if you want to go home and a coach and four instead of having to walk home, then I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this information is worth a hundred guineas. Thank you very much, lady. One shilling's the price of the car. 
That's right, go on, you go up and of course. Why is he talking such a lot of nonsense? Nonsense. Just a little closer, ladies and gentlemen. Clever. Every horse named in this car, I back myself. I don't give you one horse and back another. Oh, all right. Where's your friend, Mr. Evans? That is Mr. Evans. That's more and more. That's the bell, ladies and gents. We've got five minutes to get on for the first race. Chilling's the price of the car. I guarantee you the winner of the first race. Joe, this is Esther, an old friend of mine. Charmed, I'm sure. Esther's husband makes a book. Will Letch. Will Letch? I've heard the name. We might do business. Allow me. We'll get on, Esther. It's Derby Day. On the Derby! On the Derby! I'll lay on the Derby! Three to one, I'll lay! Three, four, five! Ten bar, three or four! No more, I'll lay your points. No one, I'll chance my luck from a thousand of yours at twenty. Number 52, Townmore, goes from the fifth. Thank you very much. Peregrine, six to five against. Six bob to five, the favourite. Peregrine, thank you very much, sir. Number 53, Peregrine, six bob to five. Remember the hat, sir? William. Hello, ladies. What can I do for you, eh? Ten to one bar, three or four, eh? White flags out there at the start. Catch us all's latest. How much have we got books against the Yankee, Walter? Nothing to worry over, Will. Want to lay off Peregrine? Well, I'm not so sure we do. I'm plumb sure you don't. They're in line. What do you know, eh? Joe knows lots. Meet Mr. Evans, Will. How do? Nice little business you got here. I like your style. Get off! Come see your first race. Come on. You've got them upside down, you silly thing. Here, give them to me. Chevronel's coming up. Here, hold them up a bit. That's it. Take it carefully. Slowly. Slowly. <laughs> we have the punters that time, John. Was that the dog? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was the two o'clock, the Vendic handicap. Did you enjoy it? Don't you get and have something to eat? You're coming, aren't you? I've got to go back to the stand. I've got our livings to make, Mrs. Ledge. Mr. Ledger to come. As I was saying, I keep it all here. I work entirely on form. I remember what each horse has done in every race and where. Of course, there are some fine omens in dust coats. Well, how's everything going? Hello, Hello Will. Sir. Have a little glass? Thank you, Warren. I don't mind if I do. No, John Reynolds is slow out there on that book. He's losing me customers. I'll tell you what. I'll help you out, old sport. Thank you very much. Is he all right? Yes. He's a friend of Sarah's. Any friend of Sarah's is a friend of mine. They don't seem to trust your friend, Joe, do they? Will. Our wedding breakfast. So it is. Sarah. You take Esther around the fairground, will you, till the big race starts? All right? Well, Esther, I've been looking forward to a nice little chat. I soon saw how it was and kept quiet. So you owe me something, in a way. 
You could persuade Will to take Joe on as his clerk. Oh, go on, Esther. I do believe. Hurry up, I'm missing the silly old Darby. But Sarah. see you here. Well, unless with us, perhaps. I came with William. Oh, yes, of course. Your, your husband, he's a bookmaker, isn't he? I forgot. How about the boy? Jackie? He's here, is he? No, he's at home. Oh, I see. You know, I didn't think it'd turn out that way for you, somehow. I always thought... I was I'm glad you're following the meeting, Fred. Oh, yes. What about you, Esther? Everything all right? Happy? Yes, I'm happy. Good. Good, that's what I always wanted for you. Thank you. Goodbye. Esther! Do not forget. First Derby. And all you see of the race is Fred Parsons. Oh, Will. That man Evans. You're not taking him on as your clerk. Well, John Randall's a bit past it. I think he'll be happier in the bar. But, Will, do you think that's wise? You stick to things you know about, Mrs. Letch. Bringing up children. in the derby. A few more of these and we'll be able to send him to a good school out of all this. Come on. I never thought to see Esther make a home in a public house. Sure as my name's John Randall. But whatever she thought, she never said a word. Took to it all wonderful. <laughs> That's a large. Yes, sir? We soon picked up the running of the bars, for all she couldn't read. And soon William left the king's head to her and spent more and more time on the court. Mind you, I don't think that inside herself, Esther ever really got over the idea of William being a bookmaker. I can't say I was much struck on Joe Evans acting clerk, and me being shut up in the jug and bottle. Still, the first three years passed happily enough. Business didn't do so bad either. Though nothing special. 
then, as happens on the turf, often enough, the luck started to run all one way and keep running. And for a whole season, the bookies could do nothing right. William had always been pretty crafty with the risks he took. But now he made one mistake after another. Worse than that. You know, bookmaking, it's a strong man's game. Out in all weathers, always using your voice, trudging all over the country. One wretched afternoon in the winter of 1884. We'd better run for it, mate. If we play out, we're broke. Oh, well, that's not the... Yes, the old ones was a bit off the mark, Herbert. Uh, just one of them unfortunate accidents. Surely them gifted with uh, omens aren't troubled with the accidents. Say what you like. There's more things in heaven and earth than in your greasy pocketbook. I bet two pints it ain't greasier than any other in this bar. What's grease got to do with it? You can make jokes, but the facts speak for themselves. There's times when the mind is fresh like the morning. That's the time for them with a the gift to read and omens. It's a sudden light that comes into the mind, and it points straight as a dart. There ain't nothing to stop it. I'll give you an instance. I remember a conversation I had with a chap about American corn to help the British farmer. That conversation came back to me later, as clear as if the dawn had begun to break. I felt there was a gnomon about somewhere. Then all of a tremble, I took up the evening paper. There was my horse. Wait here. And you backed it. No. And for why? At that very moment, a cab turned over in the street. They ran out to help. There was another horse called Breakneck. And of course, I backed him. Party claim for him, is here. Walter! Will! Rotten day for the bookies, love. Where's Joe? We parted. If you want to know why, go and find him. And don't come back. That's Fred Archer, Doctor. My spy. Excellent likeness. The greatest man ever to ride. He'll always carry my money. Must cut down on excitement. Understand me? Yep. Good. Then I'll make arrangements on the way home. I'll be back later, Mrs. Rats. Tell old John downstairs to give you a nip before you go. No, I thank you all the same. Drink it up. It's not my tipple. Well, it's going to be. Not just now. What did he say? Oh, just some nonsense about lungs. I've got to go into Brompton Hospital. For long? I don't know. Maybe the winter. It's just as well with Jackie about. Well, you'd better get up now and I'll tidy the bed. Uh, I can manage. I have to give up the course. That ought to please you. Yes, but I'm sorry for you, William. Oh, that's all right. I've got everything worked out. If I can't get to see my customers, they'll have to come and see me. Will, you're not going to take bets in the bar. Well, why not? It's against the law. Against the law? Who cares? Don't take anything from strangers, that's all. Well, 
Where's the house can we live with? Pretty near broke. We've got the house. The house. We only rent that. Besides, what's it worth without the custom we get from the racing folk? Well, we could sell the goodwill. But we are the goodwill, you and me. People come here because, because they like us. <coughs> <coughs> Esther, another thing I didn't tell you. I've got to get out of England by the winter. Where? Egypt, the doctor says. Egypt? You're like that. You've never been abroad. And there's a race course in Alexandria. So you see, we've got to get together quite a bit of money. Will, I've something to say to you. What is it? Will, the time's long past when you could persuade me what's right or wrong by talking. I'll have no bookmaking in this house while I've charge of it. Well, where's the money to come from? But we'll have to take a chance. I know these places where they make a book in the bar. They're the cause of all the trouble in the neighborhood. The men let everything go as long as they've enough money for the horses. Well, I'll not keep a house where these men come with the money their wives need. Gamble on horses they never see and drink away the little they win. And look at this place, even. Look at the useless sort of people that come here. No, you can't talk me out of what I've seen and what I know. See, Will, I've, I've grown up since we were married and there's no going back. When you get out of hospital, we'll find some way of earning a living. Come along now. Get back into bed. This is a strange time to talk the way you've done. Is that loving a man? There's no love letting a man ruin himself. Another side to what you've said. My side. The people who come here haven't got very much to look forward to. Low wages, hard grind. All they get out of life is the owner bet. What's the difference between laying a bet here and down on the course? What about the stock exchange? Isn't that gambling? It's the same old story. One law for the rich and another for the poor. But you'll never stop betting. Backing your fences, human nature. It'll go on till the end of time. You sent Jackie away, haven't you? He got a chance in a training ship. It wasn't much good for him here. I see. Mind you not to excite him. Oh, no, sister. Hello, Will. Hello, mates. You got the derby call over? No, Mr. Latch. No, sister. You asked for a winner yourself last night. Oh, you're incorrigible. Well, I take these. Made her a couple of pounds on the national. How are you feeling, Will? Fine, fine. Now, what about the derby? French horse aside, there are only two in it. Aye, Paradox and Melton. Paradox has it on form. And Archer chose Melton. That's the problem in a nutshell, Will. But Archer didn't choose Melton. He, he was retained by the stable. They claimed him. Well, what's the difference? Now, look here, you two. I've had nothing else to do here but think. And I've thought this race out. Now, Archer could ride Paradox if they let him. But they put Webb up instead, see? Now, Webb's the best of the lot by Archer. I mean, well, even Archer can't beat the form book. You always said he could, Will. I'm serious, John. Dead serious. Paradox is at sixes. The other horse is at twos. Why? Well, hero worship. All the big money's following Archer. But you've got to consider form, isn't that right, Walter? Well, I mean, sentiment about jockey's one thing, but... Well, there's too much at stake in this for me. I've got to get sixes for my hundred, or I... I don't get to Egypt. And if I'm in this country by next winter, well... Will 600 get you to Egypt, Will? 
Yeah. With a bit left over for Esther and the kid. That's how it is, see? It's lucky I'm lucky. You can't do it, Will. If I ever lost at Epsom yet, spread it about a bit, Will. For heaven's sake. Well, what's the use? What I pick up here, I shall lose there. I've got to get a lump of money. It's all or nothing. But I wish the tin man was out. Time's up, Steve. Uh, sister, you run along with Walter and he'll fix you up with a nice little horse for Epsom. I just want another word with Johnny. Only one, then. Bye, Will. Nice to see you. Sit down. How's Esther? Fine. She was put out you wanted to see us today and not her. Was she? <coughs> How's Jackie? Doing well. We'll be at sea soon. Really? Really? What other news? Don't ask me to do this, Will. Don't. What about Esther? John, don't you see it? It's because of Esther I'm doing it. Her dead husband's no use to her, is he? Or to the kid. This is my last chance. It's my only chance. Listen, John. Go to the Derby. Take Esther with you. She always brought me luck. And then take that hundred pounds I saved. Put it on Paradox. For a win. And then come back here in the evening. And tell me you're sorry you ever doubted my luck. better put the money on now, Esther. I wait for you. I can't do it with you watching me. You go on, dear. I'll meet you at the start. All right. Let the old woman pick out one, because she likes the colour of the jockey shirt. All right. You want to throw your money away? Don't come to me. Just shove your hand in your pocket, take out what you've got, and fling it away. But if you want to make some cash, if you want to make your racing pay, if you want to go home and a coach and four instead of having to walk home, then I tell you later... I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this information is worth 100 guineas. Shillings the price of the car. One shilling only, and I guarantee the winner is Is this what you wanted? Nice and private. Thank you, sister. It's just while the race is on. The others won't think I'm taken out, will they? Don't talk rubbish. And you mustn't worry about the silly horses. Does it really matter which one wins? Just a bit. Stay with me for a bit, will you? Well, just a wee while, if you promise to keep quiet. Yeah. Have you ever been to the Derby? No. What time is it? Just after a quarter to three. I'll be in the paddock now, waiting for the mounting bell. Can you hear the crowds? Last bit. I'll lay six to one, bar one. Ten to one, bar three or four. 
Well then, Doggies, a nice clean start right on time. Oh. Start as Mr. McGeorge. He won't stand any nonsense. Straight line now, please. Barrett! Keep that French horse back, will you? Back, Archer. Come up into line, Webb. Thank you. That's a paradox. A strong looking bay. Our horse. He looks fit enough. Who's riding him, John? Fred Webb. Remember? Crimson, black and white sleeves. Nice straight line now, please. Barrett! Keep that French horse back, will you? Back, Arthur. Up into line, Webb. Nice, clean start. Oh, Webb's trying to size up Archer. That must be Archer. Hold it now, Archer. Yes, that's the enemy. Melton. Lord Hastings' coat. It's a pity you can't watch from our old stand on the hill. Somebody else there now, I suppose. Perhaps you'll be there again next year. What's the time now? Nearly three. They'll be coming into line now. It's a small field, this shit. <coughs> Starter shouldn't have very much trouble. Right! Start. Now look here, you doggies. I'm not going to have any of that nonsense at this meeting. Nor any disobedience of orders. Nor hanky panky or monkey tricks. You'll go when I start you, and you'll come back when I call you. Or I'll report you to the stewards. Now then, once again. Who's in front? I can't see. Well timed, Webb. If only Archer doesn't.
Jackie. Jackie. No, Mr. Lamb. I must tell him. Must not live the way I not. Ready? He's here, ma'am. Could he come in? Here? Who is? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Jackie? Here he is, ma'am. Afternoon, ma'am. Come in, Jackie, and sit down. Over here, next to me. And so you like the sea? Yes, ma'am. And you've been all the way to India? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I brought you something back from the bazaar, ma'am. Oh, how very kind of you to think of me. Oh, yes. It's very pretty. I'm afraid it's rather big for me. Oh, come up, ma'am. You don't wear it round your wrist. You wear it round your ankle. <laughs> I like this young man, Esther. You must be very proud of him. Oh, I am very proud of him. Very proud indeed. <laughs> 